Today's Namaste Yoga is a beginner's class. Hi, I'm Dr. Melissa West, and welcome to episode 153 of Namaste Yoga. If you've never joined us before, I'm so happy that you're here with us today. And just to let you know how we roll here on Namaste Yoga, we usually start with some hellos and some intros and have a little chit chat before we get started, which probably gives you a really great uh, little bit of time to set up your mat and just get things organized while I chit chat with you and uh, get started. So I we do like a little bit of announcements and um, take care of what do they call that? Like take care of business at the beginning. <laughs> yeah, there's a word for that. You guys can all tell me what that is. Anyway, so let's start by giving a shout out and saying hello to some of our members today. So I have a membership site as well. So when you get really into yoga and you want to do even more yoga, you can become a member on our membership site. And then there's even more yoga videos and uh, a forum that you can be a part of there. So hello to Rita from Missouri, Lily from the UK, Lisa from North Carolina, Catherine from New York. Deb from Whitby, who, okay, I am so indebted to Deb because she is my virtual assistant too. She's one of my virtual assistants and she is the one who looks after my books and does all my bookkeeping. So I just love her because that is something I hate to do. <laughs> Um, hello to Helene from New Zealand. Hello to Helen, and I couldn't figure out where Helen was from. Hello to Donna from New York. Hello to Linda from New Jersey, and hello to Joanne from Ajax. And when I used to teach classes in person before I got so busy teaching online, Joanne used to do classes with me in person in Ajax. So if you want to deepen your yoga practice and have even more peace in your life and interaction with like-minded people, you can register for the membership site. It's only $8.95 a month, or you can sign up for the whole year, and it's only $79.95 a year, so it's a fabulous deal. And we're filming new content this week for the membership site. We've got a great class that I'm going to be filming. I'm so excited about this. Yoga for grounding, which will solve this epidemic of too much time in our heads. We're just so cerebral from all this time on the computers and social media and all that that we need to come back down into our bodies. That's going to be an amazing class. I'm so excited about that. And also our members always vote on what they want to do. So we're doing a yoga for winter series because we're coming into the winter season here in the Northern Hemisphere. And they like series like we do these five 20 minute classes for the days of the week and they love those because they can do them in the morning before they head out for work so that's what's coming up that we're filming this week for december also to let you know the 40 day sadhanas are going so well these are personalized practices that i create just for you and yesterday i just um sold one to a brand new beginner she's actually only ever done one yoga class but she felt really drawn to order one of these Anyway, these are selling so well and going so well. And I put my heart and soul into these when I create them for you. And they're taking up, I take a lot of time when I do them. So because of that, <laughs> we are going to have to raise the price on them because they're taking like two hours of my time just to design it. Because <laughs> I really tune into your energy, spend a lot of time on your intake form 
and then we take photos and then we do a little filming for it. So uh, the base package, the Ganesh package was $99.95 and we're going to just bump it up just a little bit to account for the amount of time that it's taking me to $149.95. But we're going to give you a little bit extra time to get in. So if you've been thinking about doing that, um, we'll leave that $99.95 price to December 1st, 2012. So if a bunch of you have to order, <laughs> if you've been thinking of ordering, get your order in and you might know there's going to be a waiting list, okay? Because I'm sure a bunch of you are going to put your orders in now and we'll just put a little waiting list together. So they also make excellent holiday gifts. Put them on your holiday wish list um, and ask your partners to and husbands and things like that to get them for you. Also, thank you for your donations. Because this is a free podcast, your donations help us to produce and distribute this. There are, are a lot of costs associated, like I mentioned this morning, like Deb, my bookkeeper, and things like that help us. They help us um, take care of the costs of uh, lighting, oh, things like you wouldn't even think of, like the batteries that are mic packs and stuff like that. Um, so that helps us a lot. I have a testimonial to share with you this morning, and I love when people talk about their own experience about how Namaste Yoga has helped them, and I, I love how you share how, how Namaste Yoga has transformed your lives. These ones really are amazing. So this one comes from Ania from Poland. So dear Melissa, I found your page on YouTube. I wanted to do something for myself. First of all, I thought it was nice the way you not only practice but tell us the stories behind the yoga. I started from video 140, I guessed, but it was bringing me a lot of peace and then magical things started to happen. Now it has been two months since I'm doing yoga with you four or five times a week. Every time I sit down to class, what you say is accurate to what I'm going through and it helps me to restore myself. Now I not only know who I am, but I also know how to deal with my everyday life. The change that I'm still going through is mostly happening in my mental sphere, and it is tremendous. Life is so much different, so much more peaceful and fulfilling, and it would not be that way without you in it. I sit to my class every day ready for a journey that my spirit will go through ready for the growth of self. I love my body, and I'm becoming more and more aware of it. I feel now like you are my friend that takes me on a journey. You are a beautiful person, and you are doing so much for people. You could not imagine. That gets me a little choked up. I try not to think about that too much when I teach. Without you in my life, it would be so much more difficult to get rid of the trauma that I've been through and restore myself in a healthy way. Thank you is not enough, and thank you is all I have. I love yoga thanks to you, as it is a part of me, and I don't want to live without it anymore. It's like, isn't that amazing what kind of an impact yoga can have on people's lives? Please keep doing what you're doing. I'm sending my love to you and your Tim. I'm a filmmaker myself and always appreciate very much his work as I know what it means. So my husband, Tim, is, does the camera work and all the post-production work and all the work. All I do is sh plan the class, show up and film, and he does everything else. He's amazing. Namaste, beautiful spirit, Anya, from the cold at this time, Poland. <sighs> so that was really touching, and I appreciate so much hearing from you. And when you leave your comments on YouTube and especially iTunes. We really appreciate when you leave your comments on iTunes. Um, it helps other people find us and helps other people just like you and Ania find us. So if you need instructions on how to do that, you can go to thankyoumelissa.com and there are instructions on how to do that and it makes a huge difference. If you want some uh, great morning and evening yoga sequences that I filmed that you can get for free, you just have to go to my website and sign up for my newsletter at melissawest.com. Also, you can like us on Facebook at Your Namaste Yoga. And on Facebook, we have this really cool thing going on now and through the holidays where you can add your small business if you're a crafter or you have a small business and if you have gifts for the holiday season, um, 
we've got a thread going on that I pinned to the top of my Facebook page and just add your website and suggestions for holiday gifts because I really feel that instead of going to the mall and giving your money to multi-billion, million dollar corporations, we can share our money with each other and then it's going to make huge differences to small families and it's going, we're going to share our abundance with each other. So let's do that this holiday season. And I'm trying to make uh, our Facebook page a place that we can do that. So please do go share your, if you, I know some of you knit, I mean, I've shown you guys the amazing scarves that I've got and, and things like that from your Etsy sites and share your crafts and stuff. Do that, go to Facebook, your Namaste Yoga. Okay, we have a clothing sponsor here um, that supplies me with our clothes. Um, it's a small Canadian company. You can get clothes there for Christmas too. And she's on our list on Facebook called squeeze.ca, squeeze. And today I'm wearing the Yoga Makes Everything Better t-shirt. And this whole line, there's t-shirts, tanks, and um, bra cami tanks. That whole line is 30% off right now. So. It's a great line, and I'm also wearing a pair of Capri yoga pants today. So check her out. Donna's amazing. She lives down the road from me in Toronto, and a uh, small Canadian company uh, manufactures everything right here in Scarborough, Toronto, outside of Toronto, and amazing Canadian company. Also, speaking of another Canadian company, small supplies us with our yoga mats, Dusky Leaf, and um, I don't have our blocks out today because we're not going to use them. But um, you can go to duskyleaf.ca. They're it's an amazing environmentally conscious company. And they give 10% off to our Namaste Yoga viewers until the end of this year, December 31st, 2012, um, with the coupon code DRMelissa. And he ships within Canada. Okay, we're ready to start. You need some props. So you are going to need a yoga strap. If you don't have a yoga strap, you can just grab the tie from your bathrobe. And you're going to need a tennis ball. If you don't have a tennis ball, you could use your water bottle. Um, let me tell you what to expect from our class today. Because if you're a complete beginner, I know the first time I went into yoga class, I would have liked somebody to tell me what was going to happen in the class. Because <laughs> I remember sitting there at the end, the first yoga class I ever went to, I went because I had a test coming up. I think I was in, I was doing my master's at that time. And I went to this class because I had a test and I thought, I'll go and I'll relax. And then I won't be so stressed about my test. And at the end, they had this thing called Shavasana relaxation, which I had no idea about. And it went on forever. And I lay there just getting more and more anxious because I thought, how long is this going to go on for? Because I got to get home and study for my test. <laughs> okay, so it's good to know what to expect. <laughs> we are going to start lying down. And the reason for this is it helps to take your focus from the being pulled in every which direction like you are in your everyday life to the singular focus of turning inwards towards yourself. So over the next hour, you're going to have the luxury of focusing just on yourself. And it also gives your body a chance to relax and settle and start releasing tension at the beginning. When you lie down on the ground, your muscles and bones and everything can start to settle with gravity. So that's why we do that at the beginning. We stay on the ground at the beginning, lying on your back, and we do some preparatory postures. These are going to help you prepare for the larger postures that we're doing today, which happen to be standing postures. Our main poses for today are going to be tree pose and mountain pose. So we just start to prepare your body for what's going to be coming. So the whole class starts on the ground. It transitions to coming up. So from there, we'll come up to sitting and kneeling and do some more preparation poses. We'll do some warming up of your spine and your feet to prepare for standing. Um, 
Then when we come to standing, we'll do our main poses of the class for today, which, as I said, are going to be mountain and tree pose. You'll find out what those are. Once we come to standing, then we start to cycle back down. We'll be doing some... Oh, after st our main poses, we'll do some counter poses. So counter poses just mean you're going to release the poses from your body. If you do like a standing pose, you'll, we'll do a forward bend. We'll do a back bend. So just to create balance and symmetry in your body. Okay, so then we'll come back down. We'll do some seated uh, postures and some twists. And we'll finish lying down on the ground in Shavasana again. The reason for this is that it gives your body a chance to integrate what's happened during your practice. That is, it gives your ch body a chance to receive your yoga practice. Okay. At the end of the class, I usually read a little poem or uh, an inspirational quote that has to do with the class. When I read these, imagine that it's like you're in a store trying on a piece of clothing, an article of clothing. If you try it on and you like it, then you're going to take it home and go, this is great, I love this quote. If you don't like it, then you just put it back on the rack. Okay, no big deal here. Just like it, don't like it, no big deal. And that's what you can expect from today's class. So we're going to start by lying down and I'm going to talk you through how to lie down. Because <laughs> I know when you're a beginner, it's like, am I doing it right? And... There is no doing it wrong in yoga, so you can just let go of that right away. <laughs> so, and I've got lots of notes to make sure I talk you through how to do things right today. Okay, so we're going to start by getting you to lie down on your back. When you lie down on your back, you're going to make sure you lie in a straight line. with your arms at your side and your palms up. Now, one thing that you're going to do just to settle your low back is just bend your knees, place your feet flat on the floor, lift your bum, tuck your tail under, and place it down again. And that will just make your sacrum, the large triangular bony shaped structure on, on the back of your bum, flat. It should be a little more comfortable. Then the next thing that you want to do is reach your legs out. So just extend through your heels and let, then let your legs roll out. Your feet should be hip width apart, okay? Now just check in and see, is that comfortable in my low back? And if it's not comfortable in your low back, then you can always go back to knees bent or you can if you have a bolster if you're brand new you probably don't have a bolster but if you have a bolster if you're more experienced you can place a bolster underneath your knees or you can roll up a, a blanket and place it underneath your knees too but knees bent is just fine as well okay you want to make sure your pelvis is level. That is, hip bone, hip bone, and pubic bone are on the same level. That's level or thereabouts. Okay? Your spine should be straight. Then you're going to come to your shoulders. You want to just take a moment to adjust your shoulder blades. And the way that uh, the image that works really nicely for me is just to take your shoulder blades and then cup your heart. So you're just going to tuck them under a little bit, and that should make it a little bit more comfortable. The back of your neck should be long, so that there's a there's a nice curve in your low back here in your in your neck, and your chin and your forehead should be on the same level. Okay, if it's not like if your head's going like this, which is really common for a lot of people, then you'll want to take a, a small cushion or a fold a fairly narrow fold it up blanket and tuck it underneath your head okay so do what you need to to make yourself comfortable and I'm gonna sit up again and talk you through some more cues but you should be able to see just by the looking at checking out how I'm lying now and all those cues I've talked you through now you should be okay here now Okay, 
So the other thing you want to check in now is to make sure that your jaw is relaxed. This is the strongest joint in your body, your jaw, and so you can relax it. So the way to relax your jaw is just to create space between your teeth. And then the way to relax your jaw further is to allow your tongue to detach from the roof of your mouth and let it float in the middle of your mouth behind your lower teeth. And that should immediately allow you to relax a little bit more. Allow your eyeballs to sink back in your head towards the base of your skull. And you can close your eyes now. Let the skin on your forehead smooth out. Imagine releasing the tension from around your eyes so that it feels as though all the tiny lines around your eyes ease away. And so you're going to lie in this position, in this shavasana, in this corpse pose, this guided relaxation and, and centering here for about five to ten minutes now. And I'm just going to talk you through this deep relaxation, which is different from sleep, because you're going to bring your body to a point of complete relaxation while your mind is alert. So take a deep breath in through your nose and let it fall out of your mouth. And then start to breathe normally in and out through your nose. And follow your breath. Breathing in and breathing out. So there is no right or wrong or better, best way to breathe, just as long as you're breathing through your nose. And of course, if you have a really bad cold or you're really stuffed up through your nose, then breathe through your mouth. The reason you breathe through your nose is because your all your nose hairs have lots of filters, so you've got a nice little filtration system going on through your nose. And each time you breathe out, allow your body to sink into the floor. Feel the back of your head heavy on the ground, the back of your shoulders. Let them sink and rest heavy into the ground. Let your rib cage rest heavy into the ground. Feel your pelvis rest heavy on the ground. Let your arms and hands be heavy on the ground. Feel your legs and feet heavy on the ground. And follow your breath in and follow your breath out. And as you breathe out, let your body sink into the ground. Become aware of your spine. From the base of your spine at the bottom of your pelvis, 
below your sacrum, your tailbone, that large triangular bony shaped structure that you rested into the mat as you laid down. And then your lumbar spine, which is your lower back, which should be lifting up off the ground. To your thoracic spine, the part of your spine that's connected to your rib cage, which is resting on the ground. To your cervical spine, which is your neck. A part of your spine is lifting up off the ground again and it goes all the way up into your head to behind the bridge of your nose. So sense the straight yet curved line of your spine as you rest and breathe. And when your mind starts to wander, become aware of your body resting and sinking into the ground. Feel your breath moving in and out of your body. Become aware of the straight yet curved line of your spine. And then at the beginning of a yoga class, we usually get you to create an intention for your class. In yoga, this is called a sankalpa. And all this means is you're simply going to answer the question, why am I here today? Why did I choose to do this yoga class? What is my intention for being here today? So mentally state your intention for doing this yoga class to yourself. And then you can start to wiggle and stretch out a little bit, but stay lying on the ground for our first yoga posture, which is also called an asana. Okay, so from here, you're going to bend your knees and place your feet flat on the floor. And then you are going to cross your right ankle over the top of your left thigh. Open your right knee out to the side. And then you will draw your left leg in towards your chest. But before you do that, just Engage your abdominal muscles by drawing your navel towards your spine so that you protect your low back and keep your shoulders relaxed. Okay, you want to draw your leg in until you feel a stretch in your outer thigh muscles and into your glutes here. So this is where you should be feeling your stretch in this pose. Then what you're going to do is reach your right hand through the hole here. This is why we call this keyhole stretch. And... Um, then you're going to reach your left hand around to uh, grasp your right hand, okay? Now, if it's difficult to reach through, you can take your yoga strap that you have ready, and you can use your strap here, okay? Now, in yoga, there's something called edge, and that is that place between Feeling the sensation in your body um, between too much and too little sensation. So find that place 
if it's too much, I'm not going to be able to stay with it for too long, and it could be become injurious if I stay here too long. It was going to hurt. I'm not going to be able to stay with it. Um, if it's too little, it's kind of like, why bother? And I'm going to get distracted, and um, it's, it's like, why bother? So find somewhere in between those two places places is kind of like the just right spot the sweet spot and that's called your edge and it's a place that's going to hold your interest it's going to be interesting there's something juicy happening that can keep your interest there's sensation happening in your body it's not too much and it's not too little and that's edge that's where you should aim to come to in your yoga postures relax your shoulders Keep the back of your neck long here. You want to check in and make sure your chin and your forehead are on the same level here as well. So oftentimes I'll see my students going like this in this pose. And once you're in the pose, stay aware of the sensations in your body and also breathe. Now to come out of this pose, you're going to slowly lower your left leg back down to the ground. Release your strap if you're using one. Uncross your right leg and place your right foot back down onto the ground. And then take a moment to take a deep breath in through your nose. And let it fall out of your mouth. And then we'll repeat this posture on the other side. So now you're going to take your left knee, draw it in towards your chest, cross your left ankle over the top of your right thigh, open your left knee out towards the side, and don't expect this to be the same on the other side. It's gonna feel different. Now you'll draw your right knee in towards your chest. Remember you're trying to find that spot where you find feel sensation in your body. It's not too much. And it's not too little. So you're going to reach your left hand through the keyhole here. Reach behind on your right thigh. And then clasp your hands behind your right thigh. Keep your shoulders relaxed. And you should feel sensation in the outside of your right thigh and your right glutes. Once you're in the pose, be aware of the sensations of your body. And... Stay with your breath. Breathing in and breathing out through your nose. So to come out of this pose safely, you're going to release your hands, lower your right leg to the ground, uncross your left leg, place your left foot on the ground, take a deep breath in, and let it fall out of your mouth. And then slide your legs out. And just take a moment to receive that posture in your body. And notice how your body feels different now after you've stretched out your glute muscles and your low back. So check in and see if your buttocks and your low back feel different now. Okay. For the next posture, you're going to need your yoga strap. So slide your right leg in, bend your right knee in towards your chest, 
Now, on the base of your yoga strap, I've got mine tied because I use this for shoulder stand too, but you can loop your strap through and you'll have a loop on the bottom of it or you can make a loop on the bottom of your um, bath tie or you don't even really need to make a loop. You can just hook it without making a loop. It doesn't really matter. You're going to put your strap around the bottom of your foot. Okay. From here, what you're going to do is extend out through your leg so that your leg is straight until you feel a stretch in the back of your leg, okay? You wanna keep the back of your pelvis on the ground, your shoulders relaxing into the ground, and your left leg on the ground. Here we're stretching out the backs of your legs, okay? This is a big deal when you first start yoga because your hamstrings are probably really tight when you first start yoga. So when you're a beginner, don't be surprised if your leg's down here and you're getting a good stretch. That's totally fine, okay? As you get, as you get more flexible, you'll be able to draw your leg in more. What's more important than having your leg up close to your body is that the back of your knee is fully extended. So reach out through your heel and fully extend, fully straighten your knee, okay? So instead of going for drawing your leg in more and bending your knee, which isn't really gonna stretch your hamstring, back off more and extend through your leg. What you're going for is a stretch in your hamstring here. Okay. Another thing you want to really check in for here is that you're not having the grip of death on your yoga strap here. Okay, So just a nice light grip on your yoga strap here. Reach out through your heel. Nice, long, deep breaths. Feeling the sensation in the back of your leg. You'll also probably feel stretch in your calves as well here. And to release this posture from your body, you're going to slowly lower your right leg down to the ground. Okay. And I want you to just take a moment here to feel the difference between your right and your left leg. And maybe all the way up through the whole right side of your body and your left side of the body. You just feel the difference here. And then once you've felt the difference, you can unhook your right foot. And we'll do this posture on the other side. So let me talk you through that. You're gonna slide your left leg in, fold your left knee in towards your chest, hook up your left foot, and then you're going to straighten your left leg straight up. And again, it doesn't matter how far you bring your leg in, you want to make sure the back of your pelvis is sinking into the ground, not lifting off, and that the back of your leg is straight. You're reaching out through your heel, your left heel. So you're pressing into the ground on the back of your pelvis. You're reaching out through your left heel. You don't have the grip of death on your, on your strap. Your shoulders are relaxed. So as you're in the pose, feel the sensations in the back of your leg. And follow your breath in and out of your body. To come out of the pose, you're going to slowly lower your leg down. And 
and take a moment here. Take a deep breath in through your nose. And let it fall out of your mouth. So now we're going to come to kneeling. So to come to kneeling, unhook your foot. You can put your strap off to the side now. Bend your knees. Roll to your right side and come up to all fours. Okay, from kneeling, we're going to do cat pose to stretch out your spine. So in cat pose, you're going to place your hands underneath your shoulders and your knees underneath your hips, and you're gonna spread your fingers really wide. Your middle fingers should be parallel with your middle fingers pointing straight ahead. And all you're going to do is exhale, breathe out and round up through your back. And then you're going to breathe in and arch your back. So breathe out as you make your back into a round ball. And breathe in as you make your back into a U shape. If this is bothering your wrist, you can always come in on to fists. Breathe out and round. And breathe in and arch. And go back and forth. So this just warms up your spine a little bit. Breathe out round. Breathe in, arch, and one more. Breathe out, round, and breathe in and arch. Okay, and then you're going to turn around and come to sitting. And you're going to sit so that your legs are straight out in front of you, so your spine is straight. Now, this will be difficult to do if you're a beginner because probably what's happening is your pelvis is going to roll under because your hamstrings are going to be tight. So if that's the case, then what you can do is take a, a pillow or a nice firm blanket that you've got folded up and you can sit up on that. And what that will do is it will tip your pelvis forward so it's easier to sit up straight, okay? So sit up nice and straight with your spine straight and your legs straight and reach out through your heels. We're just going to do a little bit of warm up for your feet to prepare for standing for our standing poses, mountain pose and tree pose. So just start by curling your toes forward and drawing them back. You can even take your hands on the floor beside you. And then point and flex your toes. And then you are going to circle your feet. and then circle them in the other direction. And now bend your left leg in, cross your left leg over your right leg. And this is really gonna help you when we stand as yogis, we like to really lift and spread your toes so that you have as much of your foot on the ground, you're connecting with as much of your foot on the ground as you can. So to help you prepare for this, you're gonna take your fingers and, and place them between your toes. And then you're going to bend your toes forward and back, just to stretch out your toes. Keep your spine straight and remember to breathe. <clears throat> okay. 
I've got a little sore baby toe right now. I stubbed my baby toe at some point. I must have. <laughs> so this is, um, this gets easier <laughs> if this is your first time doing it. First of all, it probably seems weird. <laughs> Second of all, it probably hurts a little, like my baby toe is a little sore right now. And if you've stubbed your toe recently, you probably got a it's not an unusual thing to do. You might have a little bruise on one of your toes. Owie. Okay. And just give your foot a little nice little massage and we'll switch over to the other side. So slowly uncross your leg and slide your leg out. And just feel the difference between your two feet and even look at the difference between your two legs just from doing that. Okay. And then slide your right leg in, bend your right knee, cross your right leg over your left leg, and you'll do that again. You'll put your fingers between your toes, so put your baby t finger between your little toe and your fourth toe, and then put your other fingers between your toes, and then bend your toes forward and back. And remember to breathe. And keep your spine straight. Relax your shoulders down. And then you can release your hands and give your foot a little massage. Slowly uncross your leg and extend it out and feel how happy your feet feel. From here, we're going to come up to standing. Okay, from standing, we're gonna do another just quick little thing to help you connect your feet to the ground. So this is where your tennis ball comes in. So just take your tennis ball and it might be useful to hold on to a wall or a chair so that you have some balance and place it underneath your foot and just gently roll it underneath your foot. And then We'll do that on your other foot. Actually, before you go to your other foot, just feel the difference between your two feet from doing that. Feel how one feels softer. And then do your other foot. Just gently roll it underneath. And then stand on both feet and feel the difference. Wonderful. Okay, put that off to the side so that you don't trip on it. <laughs> okay, let's do our pose, our big poses for today. So it's mountain pose Tadasana. So mountain pose is a really important pose because it's the main posture that all the other yoga po standing postures come from. It teaches us how to stand, literally how to stand on our own two feet, which is really big in yoga once you get into it. We talk a lot about how we take our yoga off the mat, and, it, and this pose is like a metaphor for standing on our own two feet in our lives, so it's, it's really important. That's a big thing as adults in our lives, even as children in our lives, standing on our own two feet. Um, also, it's a pose that teaches us about how to be in our bodies and how to have good posture in our bodies so that we're standing in a way that's um, e oh, how to have ease in our bodies, so that we're not creating stress in our bodies. So let's build this posture from the ground up. Start by looking down at your feet. You want the inner edges of your feet to be parallel. You're going to lift and spread your toes so that a lot of your feet are connected to the ground. You want your knees to point straight ahead. Your ankles, your knees, and your hip bones should line up. Okay, so your feet should be hip bone width apart. From here, reach your legs down. So 
press your feet into the ground. Okay? Your hips should be level. And what that means, and it might be easier for you to see if I turn this way, is that your hip bone, hip bone, and your pubic bone should be level. Okay? Then your spine should have its natural curves. And this is probably easier for you to see if I turn this way so, as well. So there should be a natural curve in your low back. And then your thoracic spine does curve out slightly and your neck does curve in. So those natural curves should be there. Your spine shouldn't be flat. Your shoulders should be down and relaxed. You can let your lift your uh, breastbone up and away from your navel a bit. Draw your navel back towards your spine so that you're supporting your low back. Bring your ears back over your shoulders. So because we drive around and everything like that, and read and sit at computers. Our ears tend to be forward of our shoulders, so draw your ears back. And there is mountain pose. So just notice what it feels like to stand and on your own two feet in mountain pose. Be in the posture, feel the physical sensations of your body, and breathe. And as you're breathing, just notice if you can feel your breath at the front of your body. But can you also feel your breath at the back of your body, the back of your ribcage? And can you feel the breath at the sides of your body? Now, if you haven't already, experiment with maybe challenging your balance a little bit by closing your eyes in this pose. And you can open your eyes and experiment with leaning forward, leaning back, leaning side to side. And notice what it feels like to come off center and so this happens to us all the time in our lives too, right? We come off of center and we have to find our equilibrium again. So come way off of center by leaning forward and back, side to side, and then find center again. Okay, and then one more position in Tadasana, extended Tadasana pose. So keep your shoulders relaxed and arc your arms straight up. So mountains are strong and unmovable. So it gives you a sense of feeling really grounded and centered in this pose. Feel your feet on the ground. Feel the sensations in your body and be with your breath. And then to 
come out of this pose, you're just going to slowly arc your arms back down to your sides and gently shake out your arms and your legs. Great. So our second main posture for today is tree pose and tree pose comes from Tadasana. So it's a balancing posture. So the way it works is you're going to stand on your right foot and you want to focus on keeping your pelvis level so that when you lift your left foot, you don't hike up on one side. So I'm going to give you lots of options for this. You're going to turn your um, left toes out to the side. And the first option is to keep your toes on the ground. Okay, so you turn your left knee out to the side and your toes can stay on the ground. The second option is to pick your foot up and place it below your knee. The third option is to place your foot somewhere above your knee on your inner thigh. Okay. You want to find a point with your eyes to focus on. This is called your drishti in yoga. And this will help you balance. Draw your navel back towards your spine. Lift up through your pelvic floor. This will also help you balance. And see how much you can keep your hip bones level here. You'll bring your hands into namaste position. Namaste is a Sanskrit greeting, which means all the best parts in me. Um, honor and greet the best parts in you. And you can keep your hands here at your heart center or you could take your hands up and overhead. The more you lift your hands up, the greater the balance challenge is going to be. So once you're in the pose, you're going to Focus on the sensations in your body. Feel your foot on the ground. Feel your other foot on your inner thigh. Keep drawing your navel towards your spine, lifting up through your pelvic floor and breathing. Ears back over your shoulders, shoulders relaxed. And to come out of the posture, you can slowly lower your arms down. Release your hands from namaste position. Release your left foot from your right leg. Place your foot on the ground. Okay, so let's build this posture on the other side. So find a point to focus on on the ground, probably about two feet, three feet in front of you. Feel your whole left foot on the ground. Turn your right toes out. You can either keep your right toes on the ground or pick up your foot, place it below your knee. Or if you're up for more of a balance challenge, you can place it above your knee. The point is that you don't wanna place it anywhere on your knee. Then you bring your palms together at your heart center. Lift up through your pelvic floor, draw your navel back through your spine. Bring your ears back over your shoulders. If you want more of a balanced challenge, you can lift your hands up and overhead. Feel what's happening in your body and breathe in and out through your nose. To come out of the posture safely, you're going to slowly lower your arms back down to your heart center 
Release your hands. Slowly lower your right foot down to the ground and then shake it up. Okay. So, we've had a little change of plans here because I've been so careful about giving you lots of instructions on how to do yoga postures today that I've gone probably way over my allotted time and I want to make sure that I respect your time and not take up too much of your time that we are going to go right to Shavasana here. Now, it's safe. We haven't done anything in your body that is needs to counterpose from here or that we need to create balance and you're going to be completely safe going into relaxation now. So I would like you to um, meet me on the ground lying on your back now. So I'll just talk you through that lying on your back here. So the couple of little cues that we did at the beginning was you just bent your knees, tuck your pelvis under so that your low back is nice and long. Your feet are hip width apart and you let your legs roll out. If your low back is sore here, you can always bend your knees or put a rolled up blanket underneath your knees. Your spine should be straight. Your pelvis should be level. There, your body should be straight. Okay, arms equal distance from your sides, palms turned up. Tuck your shoulder blades under. Nice curve of your neck here. Chin, forehead on the same level. If not, tuck a pillow underneath your head. Okay, so you stay resting back, and I'm going to read you a short quote here that um, this was really great. Yesterday, I was looking for a poem either on mountains or trees, and so I just went to our amazing Facebook community and asked them for a poem on trees and mountains, and I got loads to choose from. So this is one that Joy shared, and Joy is actually one of uh, Namaste Yoga's research assistants, so <laughs> how appropriate. <laughs> and this is a quote from Mother Teresa, and I thought it went well with our theme of um, trees and mountains today. And she says, see how nature, trees, flowers, grass, grows in silence. See the stars, the moon, and the sun, how they move in silence. We need silence to be able to touch souls. So continue to rest back here for a few minutes, following your breath in and out to receive your yoga practice. Gradually allow your breath to deepen. 
wiggle your fingers and your toes. Bend your knees, place your feet flat on the floor. And slowly roll to your right side. And gradually make your way up to seated. Rolling up so that your head is the last thing to come up. Thank you for joining me for episode 153 of Namaste Yoga. I'll see you next week for episode 154. And if you're a member, I will see you on the membership site. Namaste. Ha, ha, ha.